Hello, and welcome to the Crucial Conversations for Mastery and Dialogue course preview. My name is Scott Robley. I'm a master trainer here at Crucial Learning. I'm so excited that you would take the time to learn more about this amazing course. Before we dive in, let me explain what you can expect. First, this course preview is designed to put you in the driver's seat as you explore and learn more about Crucial Conversations for Mastery and Dialogue. My goal is to help you gain the insights and information you are seeking as you consider this course for your organization. Speaking of, I encourage you to ask yourself this question. What do I hope to gain from watching this course preview? Let your answer drive your experience. Take time to pause and record impressions and ideas. Begin noting applications and next actions. Second, my intent is to give you a real overview of the crucial conversations for Mastering Dialogue course. I will start out by sharing some research that highlights the personal and organizational challenges our course addresses. I'll also share a powerful example of the impact and outcomes of the course skills. Most importantly, I'll give you a taste of the course. You will learn principles and skills you can begin applying in your life today. Next, I will highlight our premier instructional design and introduce you to our various learning formats and delivery options. Finally, I'll share a special offer that will make it easier for you to take the next step. One more thing. Whether you're a current client or certified trainer who is familiar with us and our courses or you're meeting us for the first time, I want to welcome you to Crucial Learning. Let's get started. While organizations may recognize the value of effective communication, they sometimes shy away from investing in communication training for their employees because it's hard to track a return on investment but it isn't hard to see the impact a lack of communication presents. We recently asked more than a thousand professionals to tell us about communication in their workplaces. We asked them to estimate how effective communication, or lack thereof, impacts the bottom line. Here's what we learned. 72% said people in their organization don't speak up when a peer doesn't pull his or her weight. 68% reported failures to address disrespect. 57% said they stayed silent when peers skirted important workplace processes. What is the impact of these conversation failures? Half of our respondents said they waste seven days or more avoiding crucial conversations. They further estimate their avoidance costs their organization an average of $7,500 per conversation in lost time and resources. So what do they do instead? Some of the more common responses include complaining to others, doing unnecessary work, or ruminating about the problem. Now, how effective is that? We also looked at the most common costly conversations. What are the topics people struggle most to address? Here are the top five. Prickly peers. They fail to confront rude, abrasive, and disrespectful colleagues. How about ticking time bombs? They fail to speak up when projects are doomed to fail due to poor proposals and procedures. Lazy and incompetent colleagues. They fail to talk to peers and direct reports about poor work habits, incompetence, and the lack of engagement. Abusive bosses. They fail to openly discuss damage done when people of power resort to control and reliance on position to push their agenda. And management chaos. They fail to get clarification when people feel uncertain around roles, responsibilities, and timelines. There are two questions you should be asking. Which conversations aren't being held in your organization, and what is the cost? The most important question in our study was why. Why do we bite our tongues? One in three say they don't speak up when it matters most because the culture does not promote or support doing so. Here's even a more telling data point. Only 1% said they have the confidence and skills to do so. Author and leadership expert Joseph Grinney said, one of the costliest barriers to organizational performance is unresolved crucial conversations. Now, leaders at NASA Apple, the Academy of Program Projects and Engineering, asked 152 crucial conversations graduates from four different groups to report how their behavior had changed as a result of the course, both immediately after the course and 45 days later. Now, 83% reported applying the skills to help resolve disagreements and accurately addressing concerns in a safe way. 81% reported applying the skills to give and receive feedback. 
81% also reported speaking more effectively about high stakes, emotional, and controversial topics. And 63% reported applying the skills to foster teamwork. When surveyed 45 days after the training, participants indicated improved results in the following areas. Work organization, team relationships, confidence, work quality, and productivity. We want to help you achieve similar results. In the Crucial Conversations for Mastering Dialogue course, participants will learn how to get unstuck, how to spot the crucial conversations that are keeping you from what you want, master my stories, how to keep your strong emotions from taking control of the conversation, and how to create emotions that will bring you into dialogue. Start with heart, how to focus on what you really want. State my path, how to start a conversation with respect and honesty. Make it safe, how to talk to anyone about almost anything. Learn to look, how to notice the subtle and not so subtle signs that we and others are not in dialogue. Seek mutual purpose, how to find common ground even when it seems impossible. Explore others' path, how to listen and respond to others' meaning, and move to action, how to turn crucial conversations into action and results. Let's take a peek at one of my favorite skills, Master My Stories, and how to keep strong emotions from taking control of the conversation. Imagine this is your manager, and he is speaking directly to you. As you watch, think about how this would make you feel. Do you know what the issue is? You think you're the smartest person in this room. I told you exactly what to do, exactly. And then you rush right through it, putting the company at risk. And you come here all nervous, knowing that you messed up, hoping that I would just let it go. Well, you've come to the wrong place because I am out of sympathy this time. Wow, this is a hypothetical situation, and yet I imagine many of you, if not all of you, felt some type of emotional response. Here's the point. When strong emotions threaten to take over a conversation, it's not enough to control or suppress them. We have to learn to create new emotions. In order to do this, we need to understand where our emotions come from. Our stories create our emotions, but we create our stories. This is part of the path to action. Here's how it works. First, you see or hear something. For example, you're working on a report and your manager checks up on you three times in one hour offering suggestions. What story might you tell yourself about why she's doing this? You decide that your manager is questioning your capabilities. She doesn't believe you can complete the task on your own. How would this make you feel? I'm confident that you are thinking about some powerful emotions. Let's say you feel hurt and defensive. This leads to anger. Your manager obviously hasn't paid attention to your work in the past. So how might you act? You hold a grudge and don't listen or respond to your manager's suggestions. And what will be the result of that decision? Let's go back to your manager and see why he became so upset. Watch for each part in the path to action. So, let's take a look. Hey, heads up. Taylor's on his way over here, and he's got some pretty bad news. The project we've been working on for the last two weeks was sent to London, Ontario, Canada, not London, England. So the client's obviously pretty upset, and they're threatening to sue us. So. How did this happen? Guess we'll find out when he gets here. You know what? I do know what happened. He must have done what I told him not to do. He was trying to get off early that day and trying to get to his kid's baseball game. And then he wanted to turn the job over to Vanya. And she's only been here for only a week. And I told him not to. And then later I see him getting in his car. You know, it must have been him. He blatantly ignored my directions. So how's the big job? Uh, yeah, that's, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. Seems the package got sent to Canada and not England. 
Do you know what the big issue is? You think that you're always the smartest person in the room. I told you exactly what to do, exactly. And then you rush your way through it, putting the whole company at risk. And then you come here thinking that uh, I'm just gonna let it go. Well, you come to the wrong place because I'm fresh out of sympathy this time. Well, actually I did what you directed, exactly. But when I sent the routing slip up through your office for final approval, someone entered the wrong shipping code. Well, I mean, that, that, that does happen. Um, okay, uh, good job. Uh, I'll just take it from here and uh, thanks for the update. I guess there is one more potential element in the path to action, <laughs> looking foolish. Did you see his path to action? What story did he tell himself? What emotions followed? How did they affect his behavior? We have a natural tendency to tell stories. We try to figure out motive. We judge, which leads to feelings and finally actions. And we do all this so quickly that we sometimes don't even notice it. We become our own worst enemy. Our negative story escalates our emotions and we act our worst when it matters most. And the biggest problem is, we tend to believe the stories we tell ourselves are facts. When it comes to telling stories, we have to watch for three clever stories. These are the stories we tell ourselves to help us feel good about doing things that ruin relationships and results. The three clever stories we tell are the victim, villain, and helpless stories. With the victim story, it's not my fault. We tell ourselves we aren't contributing to the problem. With a villain story, it's all your fault. These stories emphasize others' nasty qualities and typically rely on ugly labels. With a helpless story, there's nothing else I can do. Here we convince ourselves that we have no healthy options for taking action. To challenge these clever stories, we have to tell the rest of the story. Clever stories conveniently leave out pertinent information in order to make the story suit our needs. They cast us in a positive light while placing the blame on everyone and everything else. When we tell the rest of the story, we add valuable information to our stories so they better represent reality. Ask yourself three crucial questions to tell the rest of the story. When you find yourself in victim mode, tell the rest of the story by turning yourself into a contributor. Ask yourself, what am I pretending not to notice about my role in the problem? This isn't about taking blame, but rather managing emotions and opening an avenue of thought to consider your own actions. When you find yourself in villain mode, tell the rest of the story by seeing others as humans. Ask yourself, why would a reasonable, rational, and decent person do this? This question isn't intended to excuse others for bad behavior. When we allow that the other person might have reasonable motives, we soften our emotions long enough to allow for dialogue. When you're feeling helpless, tell the rest of the story by looking for what's in your control. Ask yourself, what should I do right now to move toward what I really want? While there may be systemic, structural issues that make it difficult or impossible to change what you would like to, this question prompts you to explore how you might change those things that you can. Challenging clever stories with questions allows us to uncover important information so that our stories better represent reality. And this helps us better engage in dialogue. One way to help overcome our costly conversations is to learn how to master our stories. At Crucial Learning, we want to provide more than just education. Our mission is to improve the world by helping people develop skills to improve themselves, and that requires learning experiences that lead to changed behavior. That's why all of our courses target the three aspects of behavior change, insight, practice, and application. Great instructional design begins with powerful insight to proven principles, practices, and skills. We know that insight alone is not enough. Research shows that the predictor of mastery of almost any skill 
is not the number of hours you spend in a classroom, but the amount of time you spend practicing. Our courses are rooted in deliberate practice. We provide ample opportunity for participants to practice each skill in short, precise intervals and receive clear and immediate feedback. Finally, we combine the element of relevant application. Participants have time in the course to reflect on their own lives and challenges and map out how they will apply the skills. By combining insight, practice, and application, learners are equipped and ready to live the behaviors they've learned. It isn't easy to bring about real change. Training that receives high ratings often yields no perceptible change in performance. To overcome this problem, we train actions, not outcomes. We follow an intentional instructional model and focus on the crucial skills demonstrated by effective and influential people. In the Crucial Conversations for Mastering Dialogue course, participants will experience engaging activities and hands-on skill building. With our training, there are no lectures or death by PowerPoint. Instead, you will find energetic exercises, practice on real issues, and group discussions. Crucial Learning leverages award-winning videos that both enlighten and entertain. You will see correct, near-miss, and disastrous ways of holding crucial conversations, and you'll learn from the successes and failures of others. You will also hear from subject matter experts as they share powerful stories of application. We also know that training is a journey, not an event. Our courses come with robust follow-on tools and post-training support. We believe much of the work begins when the workshop ends. So we provide tools and resources to help you along the way. At Crucial Learning, we want to meet learners where they are. So we offer multiple ways to experience crucial conversations for mastering dialogue. We offer an in-person two-day course, as well as a virtual course delivered in five two and a half hour sessions. According to surveys, participants find the virtual course to be just as engaging or more engaging than in-person training. We also offer a convenient on-demand course so participants can learn at their own pace. We've combined our cutting-edge instructional design with an easy-to-use learning platform to deliver an engaging learning experience. Although learners love the on-demand approach, they sometimes miss meeting with others to discuss principles and practice skills. This is why many organizations decide to take a blended approach where they can combine the convenience of an on-demand with live group discussions, either in person or virtually. Many find that it isn't an either-or approach, but rather a combination of learning formats that best meets the needs of their learners. In addition to our various learning formats, we also offer several ways you can bring the course to your organization. We offer regularly scheduled public courses where you and your team can attend. These public courses are taught by our amazing master trainers. You can also host a private course by bringing in a master trainer to teach the course in your organization. Finally, we offer trainer certification, which allows you or others in your organization to get certified to teach the course. Carrie Patterson, another one of our authors and founders, says, the capacity to master crucial conversations does not simply predict individual effectiveness. It is also one of the most potent drivers of organizational performance. I hope you found this course preview valuable and that you received the answers you were looking for. I've also got a special offer for you. It's going to pop up on the screen right now. I hope you take advantage of it and continue your journey. Thanks for watching. We look forward to helping you and your organization as you strive to improve results and strengthen relationships by building a culture of dialogue.